Right, so. Knife review time. So it's time for a knife review. This one is of a new knife I've just had made by a good friend of mine, Simon Hardy. We've done all the assembling of the handle furniture and the sheath. Made it to sort of a little design that I wanted it with this little pouch in the front. And it's a Serbian chef's knife or it's sort of in between a Serbian chef's knife and a cleaver Serbian cleaver it's quite heavy and I'll just go over the specs etc of it now so it's quite a bulky thing it's a heavy old knife it's made of 6 mil 012 tool steel I believe, as I'm told, or as close to an O1 tool steel as you can get. So it's very easy to sharpen, retains an edge for quite some time. It's about 59 or 60 Rockwell C, so it's quite a tough, hard knife. Probably a similar sort of Rockwell to an axe. I mean, I've caned this. And you could probably use it as an X. It's got a real, real tough blade to it. The handle material is olive, olive wood. The handle's probably it's nice and just over palm width. Okay, or well, my palm width. I've got quite. I got. I've got fair size dabs for a short ass. So I'll take a, a nine or a large glove and my hand fits around it nicely on the curvature on the palm swell of the knife so it's quite a nice shaped knife it's got red liners on it and two brass pins two brass uh, loveless bolts holding it in place and a lanyard tube now, I'm not going to put a lanyard tube on it. If I was taking this to the jungle, which you flipping well could, it's such a tough old beast, I'd put a lanyard for it, but I'm not going to put a lanyard for it because predominantly this is my kitchen knife. It's a kitchen knife I take away when we go away. So in our future videos that I'm going to be producing, when I'm away all over the country, this is the knife I'll predominantly be using for my cooking work when I'm out. It's got a thong hole here, so if you wanted to put a thong to tie it or hang it up or whatever, you could put a thong through there. It's got a nice big thick welt all the way through the end to prevent the stitching from being sliced through when you're drawing and replacing the knife into the sheath. It's got a lovely closure tab which is removable I really like that feature a removable closure tab holds the knife securely in place there's no way that's coming out it's lovely and tight and also when you're using a knife whenever you use any knife especially like bushcraft knives when you're out in the field the sheath or the scabbard is the knife's home Okay, and think of this as a child. You have to protect this with your life. Your knife is your life. Okay, you protect your knife through thick and thin, and it's very comfortable and feels very secure at home. Okay, in its sheath. Now, this protects the knife from you and you from the knife. It protects you from knocking the knife off 
of a side onto hard floor or and getting damaged or it prevents you from knocking into the knife and slicing yourself or someone else slicing yourself. Okay, we protect our knife at all times in bushcraft and survival. It's our main tool. As I say, your knife is your life. Good old favourite saying of mine. So this tab also can open, I'll do it from the front, can open up, slide out the way, like so. So you don't lose that, that's on there. And then you can draw the knife. Now I always draw a knife in two stages. With this, on the top of the knife scabbard, you've got like a little ridge there. Okay, I can put my thumb on it and draw the knife. Okay, draw the knife in two stages so I can get the knife out thumb length. Okay, then I've got the blade exposed. Then holding the spine side of the scabbard, which we always do, we never hold underneath where the blade side of a scabbard is on a sheath, just in case as you draw it, that's the sharp edge. Alright, I've seen some. See several people cut themselves when drawing or replacing a knife due to incorrect hand placement. Okay, safety is paramount when we're out in the field. Bushcraft is all about common sense and safety. You cut yourself, you go from a bushcraft situation to a survival situation in a nanosecond. So we always hold the spine side or the back half of the scabbard. If you hold this side and pull it, you leave a cut your hand finger, it's usually a forefinger that gets cut, okay, or you'll slice through the slice through the stitching if it's not a good made a well made knife and that can result in a cut to the palm as you're drawing a knife. So we always hold the spine side and draw the knife, okay? So release the knife, get to know what side of the side of the knife is the blade on if you're not too sure if it's a similar shaped blade either side and then completely draw the knife from its uh, sheath. Okay, I'll put that back in for now because I'm going over the sheath. Put that back in. Okay, and then reattach that back in its sheath. Really nice pop studs, really well made. Very, very snappy and locate really well. Okay. Heavy duty scabbard. This is this is built to last, this is this will last me a lifetime and, and it will go on to my kids and my grandkids and their grandkids and so on and so forth in my view. Such a tough old knife. On the front I spec this, it's got a DC4 knife sharpener in it. Okay, for when I want to sharpen a knife. Which is a diamond stone this side and a ceramic sharpening stone this side. Okay, so it's handy for sharpening out in the field. Now, I was going to have a, a fire steel put on this as well, but I thought I'm usually I've got three forms of fire lighting on my person when I'm out in the field. This is predominantly a nice all purpose kitchen knife for when I'm out and also in the kitchen. So I didn't really want it, uh, the aesthetics with a, with a fire steel on it. Now, if I wanted a fire steel put on it, I could send it back to my friend Simon Hardy of Ashdown Forest Crafts and he would put one on it for me because that's the kind of guy he is. He's a smasher. Okay. So, DC4, that's a Fjaldnafen, Kniffen. DC4, not, uh, I believe Ray Mears sells these on his site and it's quite. If you just put DC4 sharpening stone or DC3 sharpening stone. The DC3 is a small one and the DC4 is a larger one which is what goes in here. Both stones will go in this because I asked for the larger one to go in it. Okay. So onto the knife. Put that down there. So we've got a knife out. Again, over O1 tool steel, or the equivalent, is made by Reese VC Works. He's a knife smith and a blacksmith. Okay, I believe it's stock removal. It's a piece of O1 tool steel plate, which has got now, then got a hammered finished, a hammered finish on it. Okay, which again it brings the carbon to 
to the surface and protects the steel. It's got this nice black hammered smith finish. Again, as I say, it's really like a cleaver. It's got more of a curved blade. Curvature to the blade is more than a than a cleaver. Okay. But it's got a really nice sharp spine. You could draw a, a fire steel over that. That'll take a fire steel spark or a ferro rod, ferocian rod rather, um, spark. And it's it's quite a piece of kit. Quite a piece of steel. Okay, now this is razor sharp. I've been sharpening it just to thin this edge down. It's got a convex edge on it. Okay, like an axe really easy to sharpen I'll show that in another video axes are easy easy to sharpen there's no black art in sharpening knives okay it's not some sort of like a witch doctor can only do it on a full moon whilst covered in blood you know um, it's such an easy thing to do and I'll do a few videos on that because people make it hard for themselves and when people teach sometimes they teach it as in a, in a way where uh, it becomes this black art, but it's not. And this is, my arms are bald anyway at the moment because I've been uh, sharpening my kitchen knives, but that is as sharp as, okay? I will wash that before I start cooking with it. Don't want people to have hair in the food, okay? It's got a nice rocking curvature to it, so you can use it, okay, in a rocking motion like you would do a chef's knife, okay, by gripping, gripping whatever you're cooking, whatever you're cutting, you draw your fingertips back and, and make your knuckles more pronounced, and then use your knuckles as a guide, and you can use that in a choppy motion like that, so the front of the knife stays on the board, and then as you push forward, backwards and forwards, this part stays on the board, and this part producing that chopping slicing action or you can use it in a which I like like a chopping sort of motion but this thing is razor sharp and it holds an edge <coughs> I mean give Reese's Joe uh, X uh, VC works this thing holds an edge okay it's really nice So again, I'll be using it. I've used this for all sorts of stuff at the moment. I've used it for chopping up meat, chopping up chickens, chopping vegetables, chopping shallots up, garlic into really fine slices. Um, it's as sharp as you like. Um, I've put a post up on my Facebook about it, and I think Simon got quite a few orders from that post. But uh, and there is uh, the VC Works Reese's logo. I'll put below a link to Simon's website and also VC Works website for, for Reese. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a piece of kit. I've always wanted one. I've wanted one for ages. Um, and to be honest with you, I think I might even get him to make me a 3mm version of this. So I've got a heavy cleaver type. I mean, this was over. Uh, to have it handmade, it's a handmade knife, you know. Two guys have put their art and souls into this with a sheath, the blade, the, the, the scales, etc. So it's over £200. Um, you'll have to get hold of Simon for a quote at uh, Ashdown Forest Craft, but it was over £200. I'll, 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 I'll lay that one down on you, okay? So, but again, you can't put a price on people's time sometimes. And for a handmade bespoke item, that's pretty special. Okay, it just looks really cool as well. I really like it. I'll be just slicing a chicken up with that later on. Okay, so it's the VC Works Simon Hardy collaboration Serbian Chef's Knife Stroke Cleaver. Okay, again, I might get him to make me a free meal version of this uh, with a bit more of a curve, a bit more of a utilitarian knife. But I'm taking this with me everywhere. This is going to go into Gladys into our uh, motorhome, and this will be going with me all over the place. So this will be a little star of the show, and I'll stick her in the uh, in the comments below each video, so so you can see and pe other people can see who made it. Okay. 
but I hope you like this video got any questions put them below I will answer them I'm very good like that okay um, again I'll put the links to Simon and Reese's websites in the comments below I hope you've enjoyed it I'll be doing a lot more I've got several knives I've got quite a few knives and I'm going to do a little review on most of them okay also not the butter knives from Asda that's in my drawer but I'll be doing a, a review on most of my bushcraft knives and survival knives and my speciality knives and um, I'll pass them over to you so I hope you enjoyed it give my uh, channel a nice little subscribe I'd really appreciate that it'd help me right out getting my subscriber based up like this video because that would help as well and please share it if you know anyone else that might like to look at the Simon Hardy from Ashdown Forest Craft and Reese from VC Works collaboration on a Serbian chef's knife it's a pretty special bit of kit this is bomb proof alright thanks for watching really appreciate it as always love you those look after yourselves eh Merry Christmas it's nearly Christmas laters